All right guys, welcome back to my channel. Today what I'm gonna be doing is putting in my polyethylene pipe in the uh, trench here. Now I have to clean the trench out, but before I do that, I have to get it in here first, cover this area up so I can get in and out of my driveway. But that's essentially what I'm gonna be doing now is putting in the polyethylene pipe in here. Uh, but I have to clean the uh, trench out with a uh, trench shovel, so that's gonna be fun. So let's get started. I had the uh, poly line all laid out for the sun to warm it up and straighten it out so it won't be all coiled up. Now we're going to start laying it in the trench. Okay, so this here is my cable line. I have to bring the pipe under it because the cable line is only roughly seven inches deep. I think I'm gonna have to get my assistant again. <laughs> I just wanna to put too much pressure on that cable line. Okay. Tell you what, why don't you go on the... Honey? Oh, she's going behind the camera. <laughs> Yeah, why don't you go over there and give me some slack mm -hmm. while I pull on it. Okay. Man, that's working out real good. Okay, this is where this end's gonna connect to the pipe that tees into my house line. So I got more than enough slack here. That's good. Now we're gonna put the rest of the pipe into the uh, trench where the uh, driveway is. So what my wife's going to do with this postal digging bar, uh, she's just going to put pressure on the pipe, make sure it stays down while I fill it up. Because we don't want it raised up as we're filling it. Okay, just move down. you believe this these guys are just hanging out relaxing living the life made in the shade 
Isn't that right? Unless you're making ugly faces. Are you guys done making ugly faces? You got ugly faces. You guys got ugly faces. That's ugly face to me. Yeah, those are ugly faces. You guys done making ugly faces now? How about you have kissy kissies? There you go. Give her kissy kissy. Kissy kissies. Huh? You don't want to give her kissy kissy? No? You'd rather growl make ugly face? You want to make ugly faces? Huh? That was a bird. Yep, that was a bird, all right. Okay, you guys done making ugly faces now? Okay, good. Kissy, kissy. That's good. That's good. You want to give me one, too? <laughs> All right, get out of there. Go, 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 go. Go, go. Out, out. And, of course, as you're putting the poly pipe back in, you don't want to knock dirt back into the trench. Here I have an electrical line. Uh, probably best I go underneath it. Okay. Now that I got the pipe in here, I still have pipe to go around my garage, all the way to the chicken coop, and I have to cut it and start connecting it to my uh, shutoff valves, my uh, ball ball valves. Okay, now that I got the poly pipe all in the trench, there's some connections I have to make. All right, so I'm ready to put my T where my main line is here, and I have to have a line going to my garden here. So, this is what I'm gonna put here. I have a ball valve here, and I will put one of those valve boxes here so I can have access to this uh, ball valve. Uh, the water will be coming from my rainwater harvesting system here. I have the ability to shut it off when I want to or turn it back on. And then from this side here, I'll have the ability to either send water to my house or I have a valve over there where I can return the water this way and then back into my garden and shut this off here to keep it from going back up into my um, uh, rainwater harvesting system. So let me show you how this works here, or what I did. Okay, now these here are brass, um, what do they call these? Um, well, barbs basically, they call them brass barbs. Um, nipples here. Uh, these you can get in the well department uh, at, at the big box stores, wherever they sell stuff for your wells. Um, they will have these there. 
Uh, this is a one and three, I'm sorry, one and a quarter inch MPT thread to a one and a quarter inch barbed end here. So the polyethylene line is gonna be connected here. And you can see what I did here on this uh, PVC here. Because the one and a quarter inch thread is tapered, <clears throat> I was afraid that this would split. It would split the PVC. The more you tighten this, the more uh, pressure it's going to put on this PVC and you can create a split here. So what I did is I used thread compound all the way on the threads, all the way around. And then you hand tighten this as tight as you can get it by hand. Then I got an all stainless steel clamp, okay, and put that on there and snugged it really good. Then with a wrench, I tightened this down maybe a quarter inch more, I'm sorry, quarter turn more, just to make sure it's nice and tight, and then that's it. So I don't have to worry about this PVC splitting in the future underground or anything like that. This is all stainless steel. Once I get this mounted in the ground, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, sealer on everything. It's a rubber coating to rubber coat everything and completely seal it off from any of the any of the, the of all the ground and all the elements and things like that uh, to, to keep it from corroding or possibly rusting here. Uh, but these are all stainless steel. It's just an added protection that I'm, I'm going to be putting in. So that's what we're going to be doing next. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to set this T right on top here. And the part that's going to my garden is going to be central, right with my trench. And then with a uh, Sharpie or some kind of marker, you need to mark. You need to mark the end right where it's going to go when it's completely mount it on here right to there now we're going to cut that and then we're going to connect it and i'll show you how to do that now you can use a hacksaw to cut this uh, i just have a sawzall here i have this old beat up sawzall and that will work so we're going to cut this line And then we want to clean all the ends up here, deburr it with some sandpaper, and clean it up a little bit. All right, so I cleaned up the end here with some sandpaper, get all the burrs off. Now you want to get two stainless steel clamps and put them on the pipe in the opposite direction. In other words, not like this, not like this, but like this, okay? So put them on there like that. And now just get them out of the way for now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this end up here. Gonna heat it up, get it nice and soft. Then we're, we'll be able to apply it, apply this right into it and then clamp it down while it's still warm and soft. Um, now if you're using polyethylene line from the big box stores and it's got the thin wall, you, you won't have to heat it up. They should slide on pretty snug, but they'll slide on pretty good and just clamp them up. Uh, but since this stuff is really thick walled and heavy duty, um, we're gonna have to heat this up. Now today's a very windy day, so I'm hoping this works. So I just got a propane torch here. Keep the heat near the end of the pipe, all around equally, for about 40 seconds.
Okay, that looks like that will work. All right, now this is still warm. What we want to do is put our clamps on. And the other one you want to put right butt up right up against it. And that should work. So all the polyethylene pipe is connected to all my uh, shutoff valves and I did the shutoff valve uh, by the house, the one to my garden, the one that connects to my house, and the one that goes to my chicken coop to uh, give water to my chickens. Now, the ones in my garden, the rest of it from that valve over into my garden is going to be PVC and PEX. The PEX is going to go from the PVC connection to my water hydrants because um, when you, it still, it jiggles around the uh, water hydrants. So you don't want the PVC to move. So I'm connecting PEX pipe uh, from the PVC to the water hydrant. Uh, but that's gonna, I'm gonna do that later. Right now what I'm gonna do is connect the outflow. This is the water, that's the inlet. I'm gonna put a pipe that goes from my um, rainwater harvesting tanks and it's gonna draw it in there. I'm gonna go in through my pump and through my pressure tank and come out here. And it's gonna come out there and feed into the main polyethylene line and it's gonna feed it out my house and garden and the other one goes to the chicken coop. All right, so I got the line coming out from my pump down and going out the uh, polyethylene pipe that feeds my house and garden and to the chicken coop. So that part is done. Now I have to pipe, plumb in the uh, water, the water going in from my uh, tank or coming out of my tank and into my pump. What's nice about PVC, when it's long enough, you got a little wiggle room, which is nice. There. Oh boy. That's when you know you did a job right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over your hands. Oh well. Okay, so the PVC part here, this is coming from the tank and it's all cemented together. And then I have that uh, going out and feeding the house and garden and the chicken coop. That's done. 
What I have to do now is the uh, water hydrants, the yard or the yard hydrants they call them. Um, I got to do the uh, a little bit of PVC in the garden to yet to do, and from the PVC to the uh, um, water hydrants, I got to put PEX plumbing or PEX pipe. Um, it's more flexible because when I turn the water on and off, those hydrants are going to wiggle, and the PEX pipe will, will flex it'll move around but the PVC you don't want that going on all right so this part of the uh, of my project that feeds the garden here uh, let me show you what I did here all right so down here I have my polyethylene line connects to my PVC ball valve then I reduce it down to one inch PVC and that goes into my garden area and I'll show you what I did there all right, we're coming from our ball valve there. That's one and three quarter inch tubing for PVC. Reduced it down to one inch into the trench. And then here I have a T where I'm gonna have a yard hydrant right here, which I have sitting up against the fence there. And then this continues down into the very end right there where I'm gonna have another yard hydrant there. And here I have a T and also at the other end where I have a uh, connection for a uh, three quarter inch PEX tubing here, which I'll show you in a second. And I have the exact same thing on the bottom of the yard hydrant right there. Which is going down in there. All right, so we're gonna do that next. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is get my PEX tubing here. Now, there's these little clamps here. They're uh, basically PEX clamps, okay? You need a special tool, which is like this here. And what this does, it grabs the very top here and it pinches these together and it squeezes the clamp tight, okay? So what we're gonna do is put the clamp on the tubing, put the tubing on the connector. Now you don't want it all the way up against there, but you just want to leave maybe an eighth inch or something like that. You want, basically what you want is this clamp to sit right in the middle here like that, okay? So we'll put our tubing on there, right about there. Now we want to get this, this it pinches here like that. Okay, that's going to go right on there. Make sure the clamp didn't move. And then we tighten it. All the way till it goes, can't go any farther. And now you can see compared to a new one the end there it's crimped and it's tight and that ain't going nowhere and we're going to do the same thing on the end where the hydrants are and uh and that should do it all right so this here is a yard hydrant okay the water comes out here you open the the valve, water comes out, and you close it again. And right here, there's a plunger, there's a long plunger that goes down here, and it seals it up down here. Now, these do not freeze, and the reason for that is right here, this little hole you see here, this is a weep hole. Okay, you got your water coming in here, it goes up the pipe, and out here, the spigot, of course, right? The thing is, once you close this valve and it seals it here, it opens this up here and all the water that's in this pipe drains out this little weep hole here and into the bottom below your frost line. So here our frost line is uh, basically 12 inches, one foot. And that's what I have it at right here. Um, other areas, they make longer ones so you can bury it two, three, four feet, I, I think even. Um, so 
the water is going to weep out of that little hole here. So what we're going to have to do is when we mount this down at the bottom, I'm going to wrap this with um, uh, weed barrier cloth, basically, okay? And then I'm going to fill this whole area, the whole cavity around there that I dug out, which is roughly a foot or so across, uh, with rocks, okay? And then in the very upper part, I'll put dirt. But what, that, what that's going to do is give the water that's in this pipe an area to leach out to, okay? And then in time, the ground will absorb that water. Um, but we're going to do that next. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, as you can see here, there's the weep holes right here. I got the, uh, the hydrant upside down right now. So I got a piece of this weed barrier cloth. And the reason why I'm using it is it'll let water out, but the dirt and stuff won't go through it. So we're going to wrap this. There's the weep hole right there. We're going to wrap it like this. That's good. And then we're going to put some zip ties around it. Oops. Like that. I'll probably put another one around there in each one. And again, that'll let the water out of that weep hole and the dirt and stuff will not affect that hole and plug it up. All right, I am ready to start putting in my hydrant. But before I do that, I haven't hooked up the uh, line yet, or the water uh, line yet. What I'm doing here, at the bottom of the uh, hole here where the hydrant's going, I have a brick down at the bottom here. And that's to give support to the uh, hydrant so it doesn't sink down into the ground. Now what I'm doing is I'm gonna put this uh, weed barrier cloth down there at the bottom, flat. Then, well, let me get it down there. Okay. Then I'm gonna line the walls of the hole with the weed barrier cloth also. Then I'm gonna fill it with rocks, okay? And that's gonna create that chamber in there for the water to leak out to and give it, and give the, the ground some time to absorb it. Because if I were to just fill this up with dirt, uh, there wouldn't be much place for the water to go up to empty that tube out. Um, I don't know how much is in that tube, but I'm sure there's probably a, a cup or two of water, just more or less. And uh, if I just fill it with dirt, it won't, it won't be able to absorb it quick enough. So if I build a, an area with rocks in there, it'll build a chamber for the water just to leak out into that area. And the ground can take its time absorbing it. So uh, that's basically what I'm going to do. I'll just line it. Fill with rocks and probably put one more sheet on top and then fill it with a couple inches of dirt on top. Okay guys, you can see I got my tube on the end. I got my clamp on there. Now I'm gonna get my tool. Make sure it's on there for a few seconds. Let go. And it's on there. I can bring this down into the hole. Like that. And I can start lining the hole with the weed barrier cloth and then filling it in with rocks. All right guys, we are ready to test the system out. Um, I got hoses connected on all the yard hydrants. And now all I have to do is turn the uh, system on, open these up one at a time, get all the air out of the uh, pipes, 
and um, and then shut everything and then close it of course and then we're gonna check for leaks hopefully we won't get any <laughs> all right guys this is the valve that will feed water into my pump pressure tank and then out to the rest of the system so I gotta open this up here Man, I can hear it flowing. Cool. Now we're going to go in the garage and check it out there. Alright guys, sorry for the lighting in here. It's pretty bad. But uh, the water's coming in here to my pump and then my pump out. Um, normally I would take this cap off and prime it here. But there's really no need to because the water's being sent from that tank to here. Uh, just by it being gravity fed. So... Um, I did turn it on a little earlier. My camera shut off for some reason. I don't know what, why, but I opened up the valve to let the air out and then water started coming up and I closed it and it started to prime. So we are set. I'm going to turn the pump on again. It is building pressure. What will happen is it will start filling this tank up. About half of this tank is actually usable. This is 119 gallons, so roughly, you know, 58 or 59 gallons of it is going to be uh, is going to fill up. We are at uh, 40 right now. This should shut off at 60. Okay, I notice I have a small leak right here. I'm going to have to fix that, but this should shut off at 60 PSI. Okay, that worked good. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'll worry about this later right now, but I'm going to check outside for leaks. Okay, I got my hose attached. We're going to get the air out of the system. Yeah. That is a lot of pressure. <laughs> Man. Okay, that looks like the air is out. And the pee holes work in here. Alright guys, this is the farthest one from the tank and the whole system. So I gotta get the air out of the system here. Here we go. Man, there's a lot of pressure right now. There's a lot of air in the line. That is a lot of pressure. Look at that. Awesome. I went so I went with one and a quarter inch and down to one inch um, for more volume I know a lot of people run smaller lines like uh, maybe three quarter inch for a long distance um, it'll work for one hose maybe two but if you got multiple hoses going on and you're watering different things your water pressure is going to drop sig significantly so you're better to have more volume a bigger hose a bigger pipe uh, to feed all your all those lines so that's why I went with one and a quarter, and then in here I, I, I reduced it down to one inch because I think that's plenty. One inch for two to three hoses for sure. With this kind of pressure, we could probably put four hoses on here 
and still have, not have a problem. And this this line here should only have uh, five six feet of uh, air in it, so it should be all right. Awesome. And this is all rainwater too. And by the way, we're getting plenty of it Sunday. <laughs> Rainwater. We're going to get a nice rain Sunday, according to the forecast. And then it's weeping down here, I can see it. So, everything looks good. Alright guys, so that is it for the plumbing and testing. Uh, there's a few drops coming out of the pressure switch uh, where the well tank is, a uh, pressure tank. Um, it's not a big deal. I'm going to have to uh, shut the power off and, and uh, take the wires off again, unscrew it, put new Teflon tape on there, and then, um, and then wire it back up. Um, I'll do that later. It's not a big deal. Uh, but the main system works good. You saw it's got ton, a ton of pressure. I'm so glad. Um, that the pump I have is a one horsepower pump and uh, it will produce, it's, it runs on 240 or 230 volts and it produces a lot of pressure which is good, a lot of volume and that's what you want. Um, so what I have left to do is just fill the trenches up and start cleaning up and I'm so glad because I am tired. <laughs> Alright guys, so I appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video.